The Church of Scientology has not allowed Sea Org members to have children since 1996. Church spokesman Tommy Davis explained that having children is viewed as interfering with productivity and the rigor of Sea Org life is not conducive to raising children. Sonny Pereira, Claire Headley, and Laura Diekman all entered Scientology's isolated environment as children. All three came from Scientology families. Diekman started working full-time for the Sea Org when she was just 12 years old. Pereira started at 15, Headley at 16. Because of the Sea Org's work demands, the three had few real-world experiences during their teenage years and as young adults. One by one, the women became pregnant and all did the same thing, thinking they had no other choice. They put you in this position where you're weighing the lives of all these people you're supposed to be saving against this one little tiny speck of nuisance that's growing inside of you and make it seem so unimportant. I was pounded in for two days by the top person in my organization, the commanding officer, about how um, the baby wasn't a baby yet, it was just tissue, it wouldn't matter if I aborted the baby. The policy was if, if a staff member became pregnant that they were to have an abortion. And um, there was two instances in the entire time that I was there where I saw um, a, women actually try and go against that. And in those cases, those women were on heavy labor, uh, washing dishes day and night. The other one was digging ditches while pregnant. The church never pressured or influenced any Sea Org member to have an abortion says church spokesman Tommy Davis. In a letter to the Times, he said, there's no church policy to convince anyone to have an abortion, and the church has never engaged in such activity. Sea Org members wanting children must leave the organization, he said, but are treated with compassion and supported financially in their transition. The women speaking to the Times are blaming the church, he said, for choices they made they now appear to regret. I didn't have a choice. Um, if I had said, I'm not going to do this, I would have been separated from my husband. Um, I, you know, I, the, the possibilities were endless. Um, I knew I would have had serious punishments levied. I would have been on manual labor. I was concerned for what would happen to my child. Um, so I did not have a choice. I don't think I really decided to do it, you know. It was... I mean, I knew it was going to happen if I didn't, so it was just easier to just cooperate. It was mechanical decision. It was not a heartfelt decision. It wasn't an emotional decision. It was like, okay, well, we're going to have to. They do, um, we do an ultrasound before the, the procedure, so you see the heartbeat. And I go in, and... The last thing I remember is I'm laying there and I was like, they gave me the drug to knock me out. And I was like, no. I was like, but it's too late. I'd already, I'd already done it. it was... It's just criminal to make someone go through with that. And my lawsuit specifically asks for an injunction that makes it illegal for them to require employees um, female employees to go through with abortions. Watch these women tell their personal stories in separate videos at tampabay.com slash Scientology, where you can also read the church's entire six-page letter of response. <laughs>